probably the one of the ones that we had. We had a um, woman come in with DVT and PE, and she was morbidly obese, and she was also 12 weeks pregnant. So how do you how do you anticoagulate this person? <laughs> because we don't want to under anticoagulate her because she might die. We don't want to over anticoagulate her because we also have to be concerned about the fetus. So we had to choose something that was acceptable for use in pregnancy, and we had to figure out how to monitor for this morbidly obese pregnant woman. So um, we chose to use Lovenox, and there's controversy about dose capping. Do we dose cap at 160 milligrams? Um, we dose one mg per kg, BID, for treatment. Um, so there's controversy with that, and then how do we monitor it? So um, my fourth year students looked into it, and we found some algorithms for anti-10A adjustments for anoxaparin, and that's what we used in this woman, and it turned out we had to drop her dosing um, of Lovenox because she was super therapeutic based on anti 10 levels. Um, I had a friend of mine who is hypothyroid and became pregnant, and so her dose of levothyroxine actually had to be ramped up because her volume of distribution increases during pregnancy, and so she wasn't getting the same level of hormone that she needed to maintain um, adequate thyroid levels, and so they had to dose adjust her levothyroxine higher for that. And so they constantly were monitoring her TSH levels throughout her pregnancy and dose adjusting as needed. Um, and then as soon as she delivered the baby, then they started closely monitoring again to bring her back down um, as her volume of distribution changed again.